Hello, welcome once again. It is all for United WFC, and we are back for another fans forum. I don't know how many that is now this year. What must it be? Three, maybe. I think it is three. We had a fantastic panel, all girls, on uh, our first week. On our second week, we went all the boys. And today you can see we've gone 50-50. And I didn't even mean for it to be the boys on one side and the girls on the other. It's like the school disco all over again, isn't it? Uh, but who knows? We'll be dancing merrily as we move further into it. But yes, that's kind of where we are. Uh, we have got some great people, as you can see here. We've got Charlie's back. She wasn't able to make it on Monday, but she is back again. How are you feeling, Charlie? Um, much improved, thank you. Yeah, glad to be back. Doing a bit better. Good. So we're looking for all the positivity for Charlie there. Today's the day to be telling her she looks lovely, I think. That's the one we're looking for, guys. Uh, and girls, if you want to, why not? Uh, Helen, how are you? Nice to have you back. Hi. Yeah, I'm good, thank you. Excellent. New setting as well, liking that. <laughs> Relegation to the kitchen. Love it, love it. Perfect <laughs> position. Yeah, trying to get better lighting. I don't know if it's worked or not. <laughs> yeah, looking good to me. That's great. Uh, and we've got someone back. I haven't seen him for ages, but he has returned. And there he is, just below me. Gareth, how are you doing? I'm good, thank you. It's been, um, I don't even know when the last time I was on. It's been uh, a very long time, so I'm glad to be back. Brilliant. Well, it's good to have you back. So, Pat Cho, Pat Cho, I'm going to do something we don't normally do, and I'm going to show it again. But this, this is what we're talking about today. Uh, Skinner out. Now, as you can see there, clearly in the in part of Skinner's name, it's nice and green. And that's what we're talking about today. We're doing the hokey cokey. You put your Skinner in, you put your Skinner out, you win the league, and then what do you do? That's the question. That's why I'm hoping there's going to be the question. So we shall see where we go with that. But today, I want to talk very quickly, well, not very quickly, I want to talk about Mark Skinner and whether or not we should trigger his contract extension at the end of this season. So we're going to look at all manner of things, but I want to start off with finding out what success looks like, because clearly... If a manager isn't successful, Frank Lampard, then you get sacked. That's kind of how it works, all right? What's success this season, do you think, for Mark Skinner to be judged by? What is a successful season this season? We'll kick off with Charlie. Um, I think a successful season will be getting Champions League football for me. That's the big one, isn't it? Um, cup run is always nice, but it's it's getting Champions League football that might change things for us. Um, and I think if we get that, I feel like it's it would it would be wrong to not let him stay on and continue what he started. Um, so if we got that, I think for me that 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 warrants um, at least a trigger of the next year. I would say. Absolutely, couldn't agree more on that one personally. Helen, would you go along with that, or have you got? Slightly loftier ambitions, or, or maybe even less. Maybe avoiding relegation will do for you. Tell me more. Um, I think um, progression in the league, so at least one place higher. So that would mean Champions League football. But I think if United were to win the FA Cup, that would buy him another year as well. Because it's about trophies, Man United, isn't it? Well, not recently, but it, that's the... Well, it's the goal of every club, isn't it, to, to win? So I think that would that would give him some time as well, if, if that worked. I mean, you would hope so. Leicester were certainly trying to go a whole season without having the goal of winning. But there you go. They've not quite got that far. So there we go. Uh, Charlie, would you like to answer this question quickly before we go to Gareth? Yeah, of course. I live there. Where else would I be? Like, you know, so home. OT is my church. LSV is hers. There you go. Uh, Gareth. Yeah, I think it's. Um, I think Champions League football is is the obvious one. Um, I think to kind of look at success, we need to look back to where we were um, when Casey left in twenty twenty one, which was fourth in the table, um, one point behind Arsenal, um, it, who were in fourth. So we were close to that third place spot. Um, last season it was a bit of kind of a bedding in period for Mark whereas this season's a season to kick on. I think the interesting thing is, I know we're only halfway through the season now, but if you look 
Um, we were 10 points off Chelsea in in the 2021 season. We're level on points with them now, ahead of them on goal difference, and they're you know the only side that beaten us all year. Um, all of that, you know, we're, we're now up there with Chelsea, Arsenal, City have kind of dropped off a little bit. Um, but we're very much in the mix with those top, top sides. Um, I don't think, you know, at the, at the start of the season, anyone kind of really was like, yeah, let's go and make a title charge. We may have kind of wanted it, may have hoped for it, but I don't think anybody at the start of the season was like, that's that's the realistic aim at the start of the season. I think everyone was like, right, third place, let's solidify the third place, let's get Champions League for the first time and go from there. So I think it's difficult to look back and go, and suggest that we've not made steps forward. Um, it's just now about converting it and making sure we get that that at least third place position. Um, and it's looking good at the moment. You know, we're halfway through and we're five points clear of City in fourth. So, um, yeah, it's it's looking promising. Okay, there we go. We might come back to this in just a second, TJ. Uh, and I can confirm that you're right, Gareth. Most people would have just said top three. There was one voice on this channel that has suggested from the from the outset that we might be winning the league this year. I don't know who that person is, but I'm sure there are other people who might choose to tell you that. I've completely lost what I was looking for there, unfortunately. Charlie, it was that one. Uh, the bit about on the back, they think it might be Rachel Williams. I don't think it is, is it? Mm. I'm pretty sure it's uh, El Capitano. Yeah, is that it's, right? El Capitano. it's not Rachel Williams, but I do... Um, yeah, I, I feel like an external really? pressure now. I feel like... I'm kind of like been proclaimed by others as being a super fan. Um, I do like her, not a super fan. That's madness. Um, but I probably do need to get a shirt with her name on, potentially. Particularly when, when she scores the FA Cup winning goal. That'll be oh, brilliant, won't it? Thunders a header, beats Millie Bright for power and pace, obviously. And then thunders a header past whoever Chelsea have in goal. One of their nine goalkeepers. There you go. Turns out, Gareth, it might have been me. Who knew? It might have been me. <laughs> no, it doesn't sound like you to to go one more and be dramatic, Barry. It doesn't, does it? Not at all. I'm usually so <laughs> understated, Gareth. Quite right. <laughs> I don't know. It's completely against me. Now, uh, I have a very special surprise for everybody, and it's not this. Um, it is the fact that we do actually have a fifth member of our panel. Uh, they've just come in ever so slightly <laughs> late. <laughs> Because they're not too well, but who is it? Who is it? Drum rolls at home. Who's it going to be? Oh, it's Ellie. She's back. First time this year. How you doing? I'm good. Very How good. Are you feeling, more importantly, because you weren't too good this morning. How are you doing? Oh, uh, I've got a full of a flu, but you know what? I think it's because I've been doing like the past two weekends of football. So yeah, <laughs> my foot well, then, but. Well, there we go. But it does mean that we can now have a little competition between Charlie and Ellie as to who sounds the most ill. So we're going to be doing <laughs> that. There. And because we're all about equality on this channel, that means Helen and Gareth, you're going to have to have a competition as to who can feel the best. All right. <laughs> A little bit of both. Ellie, we've just started talking about Mark Skinner and success. So perhaps you'd like to tell us what you think success is for Manchester United women this season. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. What, I'm with you, Barry, on it. I I think we really can push on and win the league. Like we're fir we're first now. We're first now. I know it's halfway through the season, and you know, Arsenal and Chelsea can come back at us. But we've already beat Arsenal, so now we just need to beat Chelsea at King's Meadow. That that's the next step in my di direction. And that one nil the other the other day. What a one nil that was, because. That has pushed us in the right direction now. Imagine if that was a draw, like that 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 would be when we were, we were moaning and everything. But that one nil, Rachel Williams came on. I'm oh, just so happy. I'm so happy for Charlie. I I was just jumping for joy. I was like Charlie. <laughs> like, <"Wait." laughs> oh, what what game? Could be pivotal. Can I just pivotal. can I just quickly say something there. Like I think Ellie makes a good point. It, you know, it was a great one to win because in previous seasons, they're the games where we slip up. We slip up, we drop points against West Ham, drop points against Brighton, against Reading and so on. So to to go away, 
to Reading and, you know, sometimes you have to grind out a 1-0 win and, and get the three points. But at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. I think at the end of 22 games, it's unlikely um, that goal difference is going to play a part. It's going to be points. So having to go away and grind out a 1-0 win is, um, is, is good. And, you know, we would have dropped points there last season, the season before. So it seemed to have turned a corner, hopefully not jinxing it too much, touch wood. This is what I'm saying, because last season, we used to draw these games, like loads of these games. Like, the draws put us off the most. And this year, this season, we're flying. But like I said, I'm not jinxing it either, because... Yeah. <laughs> okay. We're going to stick with you a little bit here, Eddie, because I've kept, I've kept this up here by Mickey Dunn. Um, and again, good to see you oh. back, Mickey. But let's go. I see your upgrading from Farrah Williams to this amazing panel. And I, I don't know if everybody else has seen it, but I see it. I see that bit where you're on another talk show, which, you know, that wasn't in your contract, but we'll, we'll, we'll come to that another day. More importantly, I'm sitting there going, that's Ellie. And I'm going, that don't half look like Farrah Williams on that screen. So there's me having a little look. And there <laughs> you were, just casually chatting with Farrah Williams on my telephone. How did that come about? No, because basically what happened was she picked someone to go live and then randomly, she put Lucy Stan and Lucy Stan at the beginning, and then it just came on me. I was like, quick, I need, I need to get the camera ready and everything. And she started talking about everything, and she said, oh, who, who's winning the league? And I said, United are winning the league. He's a... There you go, you see? Brainwashed from the start by me. Yeah, good job. Well played. <laughs> so that's what we like to see. But everybody pleased to see you. Everybody pleased to see you. So let's continue with our little drive down Skinner Avenue. Uh, and discuss all things Mark Skinner. There's things I'm sure that you're all delighted about when it comes to Mark Skinner. I'm absolutely de- uh, sure of that. And I'm also sure that there might be one or two things that might be niggles because no person, no matter how good they are, is going to completely um, keep you happy every minute of every single day. I am fully aware that my cheerful demeanour might actually really wind some people up sometimes, especially if they're not feeling too good and they're a little bit annoyed and angry. But that's the price that we pay. Uh, Equally, other people's negativity isn't something that I necessarily enjoy. So there's always things there. So let's take a nice little balanced approach. What do we think? Let's all come up with something really positive that we love about Mark Skinner and maybe something that... Peter Griffin, how would he put it? That really grinds my gears. Let's go for something like that. So what do you reckon? Something good and something that you wish you'd improve. That's better. Uh, and we'll kick off with Charlie. Yes, sorry. Okay. Um, so the thing that I like the most is that he's managing Manchester United women to their best Super League performance yet. So he's coaching them to win football games, which is what I want, is for them to win football games always. Um, What I also like about him, it's a change he's made, um, is that he stopped, he talks less like David Brent now. So he used to be really Brentish at the start uh, and use lots of jargon that normal people don't understand. Um, And he's kind of sorted that out, which I think has ingratiated him to more people. Um, I would... I don't think it annoys me because literally I'm so focused on I want them to win football games. So as long as they're winning football games, I'm pretty happy, like regardless. But I do find, and again, I'm not the expert, but I I find it tricky sometimes when it looks like the games, it sounds mad to say this, the game's getting away from us because that hasn't really then resulted in anything bad. I can't get my head around sometimes not changing things, not a particular point, but not making additional changes. But then I come back to the fact that well, it hasn't mattered because we've won the football games and the changes he has brought on, they've come on and scored the goals. Um, so it doesn't annoy me. I'm just interested. I'm interested to know, I want to know, and I'll never know, is what's going on a bit more behind the scenes. So it's not an irritation. I'm just, I, what I am interested as to why certain players aren't getting a look in, yeah. considering they're seasoned internationals. That That's the only thing I query. Fair question. We might come to rotation again in just a second, a bit more in depth. But I just want to show this because there was a nice little thing that I saw from Mickey Dunn just a second ago. And again, it's balanced. If you've got a different opinion here, come and tell us. And even if I do go red and a bit grumpy, that's just my opinion too. So that's how it works. And this was the very first message that we received on this channel today. So they should get a manager who would use that squad properly. 
Uh, and that's the opinion of that guy there, BG Gang. <clears throat> and be careful what you say, Mickey Dunn, because he's come up with the complete opposite. <clears throat> His game management was amazing to put us in a position for Rachel to come on and score. Uh, I said that. <clears throat> On Monday's show, I believe I said something along the lines of he used all the tools at his disposal. Uh, and if you go through and check the comments on that one, apparently he didn't because why well, he didn't make a sub called Rachel Williams and she didn't go on to score the winner. So uh, I, I completely misread that. So uh, expect a public apology. Um, never. OK, um, Helen, what's your thoughts? Something good? Something you'd like to improve? Um. Charlie kind of nicked my um, one about Mark in interviews being a bit easier to understand, um, less of things like Space Invaders and weird quotes like that. Um, I'm happy he seems um, more coherent in interviews and stuff. Um, but maybe he's had media training, who knows? Um, and also happy he's, he's very committed to the club. I think that shows um, whatever that means to people. It, I think for him personally, he, he wants to be here. He's committed. He wants to get the best. He wants to win, which is all you can ask for, really. Um, a, something I think maybe to improve uh, is, again, uh, like reading the game, maybe um, thinking how, how I can change it, being proactive as opposed to reactive, perhaps. Fair enough. Good points. Um, for those of you that are obviously United fans, which I presume is pretty much all of you, unless your name's Sang, um, the teams have just been announced for the men's game that's coming up at 8 o'clock. Looks like quite a strong side. So we're all going to want to be done by 8 o'clock so we can hopefully go on and roll Nottingham Forest over by about 5. So we're going to keep going through this. Good points, Helen. Gareth, what would be your plus and your minus? So I, I think... Um, the biggest strength for me is the progress that's been made. Um, you know, we we're kind of there, thereabouts a couple of years ago. And in the space of a season and a half, we're, we're now looking like legitimate title challengers. Um, I don't, I will probably come on to rotation later, but it's not a huge problem for me. Um, you know, I don't think there are um, many Arsenal fans at the moment in the Premier League that are kind of um, suggesting that certain players should should play more. I don't think it's anyone going, oh, I really wish Emil Smith-Rowe or El Nenny were getting more minutes. Um, you know, they're, they're top of the league, they're challenging for the title, so what's happening is obviously working. So I think similar thing to be said um, for, for Skinner and, and United, you know, I think wanting to kind of understand why is, is perfectly legitimate. It could be something to do with training, it could be loads of things, but um, whatever is happening this season is, is certainly starting to work. Um, I think the the bugbear for me, I think, is um, Conti Cup performances. I think I always look at sort of having two cup competitions as an opportunity to win two trophies. Um, and I sometimes think that a lot of the time you kind of see rotation for rotation's sake um, in those games. And I think you know, we, we should have been getting out of the group. Um, we should have done better last year as well. Um, so yeah, I I guess that's possibly my my irritation, if you could call it that, is that um, we're not fighting on all three fronts domestically. When you look at the success that Chelsea have had, that's all they've been doing. They've been kind of rolling teams over in all competitions. Yeah, I, I feel like if I'm being honest, if my negativity was going to come out for any of this. It would be the Conti Cup for me. You know, I, I wasn't happy with the level of rotation we did actually do for that um, because it was too much. I, you know, a little bit maybe. I think it was too much and it showed in the results. But there we go. Ellie, what's your thoughts? I, I was the way to communicate. I'm not the way to communicate. I've touched them with a uh, And it's really good because, because if I was in the right position,
<clears throat> Just doing something that I've never done before. Is that crackling in and out for everybody else as well? Yeah, Ellie, I'm going to send you away. Go and reset your iPhone or whatever it is you're using. Come back in and tell us that one because at the moment that's dipping in and out. We're not hearing what you're saying. Uh, we want to hear what you're saying. That's the whole point of you being here. So, um, yeah, if you get out, you've actually frozen on my screen. You didn't move at all while you were saying that, which was really quite impressive because that's a skill that I'd like to have, uh, but I haven't got it. So there we go. Um, so, yeah, you guys, we're going to carry on. Ellie, I'm sure, will refresh herself and get herself back in, which will be awesome. Whilst we're doing that, we said we're going to talk about rotation and subs. And that kind of seems to be the bit that I hear that's the negativity about Skinner. It's all about he's not playing the players that people want to play. Charlie, I know you come up with this every single time. and you're uh, To me, you're spot on. It's all very well and good saying this person should play, but instead of who? Always seems to be the question. You know, you can want Vilda Borisa to play, but who's coming out of the team for her? And I feel like the argument that, that the other side are saying is that, well, let's be honest, we're top of the league. We're doing incredibly well. Why would you change that? So where do you fall on that particular argument? Because you said you're interested in seeing more people play or why they're not playing. Yeah. What yeah, I've I've no um, issue at all with just churning out the same starting eleven. I think that's fairly normal um, on the whole, um, and it's working. So I haven't got a massive problem with that. Um, I've I've also got I've also got no major issue with him making the subs that he he makes because they're planned things aren't they'll they'll be rea like reactions maybe rather than proactive to things that are happening. I'm I'm just interested because I think we've we've bought fairly well. I think sort of last summer um we bought fairly well. We strengthened in areas we needed to and we have again now. Um but I would be inter I would just be interested to know um what the players are being the players that we're getting in, what they're being sold, not as in sold as in a, a lie, like just what they think their role is when they come into the club. Um because he clearly doesn't want to change things, and Martin Ho perhaps doesn't. I'm sure the coaching staff would be saying things if they did. Um, but yeah, I've, I've just been just going forwards, particularly like with the three that we've got, the three players that we've got in as well are, are a step up, aren't they, on sort of the fringe players that we had uh, or do have. So I'll be interested just to see how that's going to play out going forwards, because I think it is important that players feel like they're going to get an opportunity. And it might be perhaps we're, we're deliberately not fighting on all fronts because the focus is just on the league. And maybe in a season's time, we will start to look at fighting on more fronts and having more games. But I would just, I don't know, it's just a wondering really, rather than a, a glaring criticism. I'm very much of the mind, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Um, and it's working so far. It's, it's just, I'm interested. Like with the three that have come in, when they're all fit, I just wonder what they're expecting, what their expectations are, those three players. I don't yeah. know. It's Definitely. a weird one. Like one will never be in that moment, will never be part of that decision-making process, quite rightly. Um, so we never really know, but I just, I'm just interested. Well, I mean, you say that, Charlie, you never know, maybe we will. You know, maybe in 10, 15 years, once Mark Skinner's won multiple league titles and UA for Champions Leagues and all those sorts of things, he'll release a book. And that will explain everything about why it was that he didn't choose the people that he chose. And you never know. Uh, maybe he might do that if he gets a really I, I am know. also I'm, I'm really keen for, like, I love conversations with people on match days about the, the start and 11 and, and who's on the bench and who we think might come on. Um, but I'm also, I think some people, sometimes people are a little bit nervous to say like who they would take out and who they would put in because um, of the reaction that they might get. Um so I'd just be interested. Like I, I think we've got loads of brilliant players who don't play many games, and there's no issue with people wanting them to play. I'm just genuinely interested with regards to what, like, how would it work? So who would come out and why, and, and what would someone else offer that that someone else isn't offering? Just the debate side of it is interesting. I think. I agree. Helen, we're going to come to you in just a second, but obviously Ellie is back, and more importantly, she's moving. So we're going to assume that that means that her audio is back to what we like to call normal levels. Um, so bring yourself in, Ellie, and carry on with what you were telling us, which was your positive and your negative about Mark Skinner. But can you hear me for start? Yeah, right. 
Martin, so what I said positive is his communication with Martin because a few a few games that I've been to, I, you can hear him so loud. And it's like if I, the, one of the girls are in the position that that they are meant to be in, then um, he tells them, he's like, come on, come on, shape up now and everything, which that is so good. But then my only downfall is the Conte Cup. Like, I don't know, I don't know what's happened to us this season with that Conte Cup. We just think, feel like he's just changed too much in the squad. Like, yeah, it's hard. It's hard because you want all play, the players to start or get game time, but it just ch- changed the squad around too much, especially in that Conte Cup games. And like, I think the t- last two Conte Cup games we were smashing it. It's because nothing was on the other end. Like, we couldn't go through it or anything. So, that, that's the only bit I don't like, really, at the minute. Other than that, I think you all know I love Mark Skinner. Yeah, absolutely. And and carrying on with what Charlie was just talking there about the rotation, what do you think about the rotation? You just mentioned about the Conti Cup. He did a lot of rotation in that one. Heavy rotation in the Conti Cup. Zero rotation anywhere else, it seems. Where do you stand on that? Somewhere in the middle, what what would you do with that? Well, I'm in the middle as well because when it's cup games, you want like players to get game time, but then also you still want some of your strongest squad out because, like, obviously we know in the league our strongest squad can come win winners at all, but obviously it's just not worked for us so far, but. We do want everyone to play, and this is what Charlie said about the new players. I'm interested as well to see who comes in for who. That's that's what I want to know because obviously maybe they're going to challenge for places. I think because I'm just interested to see that. Really, always a tough one. Always a tough one. Um, Helen, we're going to come to you in just a sec. Just need to point this one out because I've seen this. <laughs> um, then he's not happy with you, Gareth. He's not happy. <laughs> Get that smile on. We want to see your Colgate teeth. Um, Helen, it's, we speak a lot about the rotation, substitutes as well. It's not even that they're not coming on and that we're not seeing them during a um, starter match, but we are not seeing them sometimes even when it comes to substitutions. You said he might want to be a bit more proactive with substitutions rather than reactive. And certainly we had that conversation on Monday there's the argument if if Rachel Williams comes on 10 minutes earlier will she definitely score the moments might be different who knows because the game has changed equally Martha Thomas did come on which was reasonably proactive but didn't appear to be in the game too much what what's your thoughts with that do you think that's a a Mark Skinner problem as in that he, he can't change that that's just the way that he is do you think he's just not entirely trusting his players what where do you see that why do you think there seems to be a hesitation maybe to, to make those subs um i wonder if it's about the relationships on the pitch um the players who play together often form those relationships like honor and lucia on the right um all the england players that won the euros they played together for so many games um at various points within within one match or across the tournament so I wonder if he doesn't think changing that would would help if you put um, if you swap in Adriana Leon suddenly and instead of Russo, then she she won't have played with them as much, so it might not work. Um, I, I don't know. It seems like maybe he's just trying to trust the players he he starts with. Um, is he standing by his decision stubbornly? Um, you could say that. I don't know. It's it's easy to say from an outsider to critique, isn't it? But we, and and I don't think he has to explain himself, does he? He's he's the coach. He's the manager. He lives and dies by his decisions. So, um, I think maybe it is 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 a personal thing to say. I chose the starting eleven. You better prove to me that I was right in selecting you. And if he thinks it is going right, he's not going to change it, even within the game. Absolutely. 100%. I, I couldn't agree more. Uh, I'm just going to point this one out again, Gareth, for you, because we're still going to talk about this rotation, but actually this is another flip side to the argument. When you think about the men's game, 
quite often we talk about the, the Carabao Cup and we go, we're not really too fussed about that. It's all about the league. It's all about the Europe. It's all about uh, the FA Cup. It's not about the League Cup. We know the Conti Cup is the League Cup version for the women. Is there not an element of this? Do you think that actually Skinner sort of played us all a little bit by sort of going, do you know what? Actually, I'm going to go strong FA Cup, strong in the league, because those are actually the things that matter. Ultimately, winning a Conti Cup might be nice, but let's set the expectations here and not here. Yeah, possibly. Um, my kind of counter to that would be that the Premier League is a 38-game season and the WSL is 22. Um, so already you're playing 16 games fewer in the league. Um, you know, the FA Cup, we, we come in this weekend, which is the fourth round. Um, so, you know, that's not a huge amount of games to, to have to win to get through there. And the Conti Cup, again, you know, you... Um, you play your group games and then you're already into the later stage of the competition. So I don't think the kind of domestic fixture congestion is, is a massive issue. Um, especially when you look at the squad that we've built. Um, I think part of the reason that we're having these conversations now about rotation and players wanting to play is because we now have a squad where there are, um, several legitimate options in every position. Um, whereas kind of last season you would think, oh, if this one particular player gets injured, then um, we're struggling in that position. Whereas now I think we, we've definitely got those options and we've got that depth. And yeah, kind of having depth is going to make some players potentially frustrated because everyone wants to play minutes. But I think Frustration is also a relatively healthy emotion to have in football. Like you don't want players um, playing a role on the bench and being perfectly content with it. Um, you may have players that you know have a good understanding of what their role within the squad is. Like I don't think Sophie Bagley necessarily is going to have huge amounts of expectations to to play league games, but but she should, should have known that when she came in. Um, but I also think that having Sophie Bagley in the squad has made Mary Earps better. I think Mary has improved for having competition for places. And I think that's the same for a lot of people. You may have kind of had ideas around bringing people in and, and they were going to play more, but the people that you've wanted to play have improved and played better. So, um, yeah, I think it's tricky. But, um, yeah, I guess the congestion, to get back to your original point, is a concern. Um, but I would suggest that the league season is only 22 games long. So um, when you're professional footballers and you, know, you should be able to play sort of low 30 games a season. Absolutely. Fair points. Uh, I kind of want to just quickly get to a couple of things that we've been putting in the chat. Paul Greaves, I don't want you to think I have been ignoring what I thought was a fabulous question. I'm definitely coming to that. That has been, I've written it down. Look, you made it onto my crib sheet. I'm like, no, we're definitely changing that, putting that one in there. So <clears throat> don't run away. And also, Anton. Don't run away either because this is one of our last topics that we're going to talk about today as well because that one got my go to a little bit so we're going to try and see if we can because we're all about solutions here you know let's not forget they won the european championships england because we gave them a solution of putting russo on rather than beth england gareth you will never guess whose idea that was either um but there you go um so we've got all these things we told skinner how to play his games and look they're top of the league so wsl looking at you kids Get yourself onto this channel. Listen, learn. That's what we're after. Um, so don't forget, we are coming to that. But Paul Greaves has put here, I, I'm not going to scroll up and try and find his question because we'll be here for the next 20 minutes. I've only just got to the bottom of the comments you've all sent. It's brilliant. Well done. Keep going. But he's asked us, who's the best manager in the league? Or even in the world right now, is it in this league? Who's the best manager in the league's for um, the female footballers, obviously. And he's put on here eventually that that's about, well, who's the next manager? If we don't have Mark Skinner, who? If we're going for somebody better, who do we pick? Um, and he's put here, it has to be someone the level of Serena Viegman. It might sound ambitious, but that's where we need to be. I will say, uh, Jennifer, I've not got a clue what you just said there. So I'm just going to say, bless you. Um, because that just sounds like it's knees to me. I've got no idea what you've just said. I've seen Kerr, and all I think is Sam. I've seen Shelley, and all I can think of is a really old 
TV program that I used to watch called Shelley. So I, I can't help with that. Um, but if somebody would like to let me know what I'm missing here, that'd be great. I'm going to ask you all because it seems a bit. Do you think there's anyone better than Skinner out there who we could realistically get? Let's go for that, Charlie. Um, <laughs> wasn't expecting that. I know. Um, I think you're right under the bus with that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Shelley Kerr, Scottish manager, and now she does something for the FA. I'm fairly certain to do with something women's. Helen just helpfully put that in the private chat as well. Well done. Good job. Oh, God. Um, right. I think if you can, you could get anyone you wanted, is what I think you could get anyone you wanted as long. But there's there's obviously lots of managers that would want guarantees of certain things. So to do with investment, to do with autonomy when it comes to decisions that they're wanting to make. So you could get whoever you wanted, I think, within reason. Um but I also don't think Man United women are in a position at the moment to offer perhaps everything that those level of coaches would potentially want. Okay. Um, and again, we're, we're kind of talking about a manager who's got us top of the league. So we could argue that this season so far, he is the best available in the country, in our country, and we've got him, which is a good thing. Um, but obviously, if if, some, if you're talking about, right, Serena Wiegmann's going to take England to the World Cup and then she's going to go, guys, I'm now available if anyone wants me. I, I would hope that Man United, taking sentiment, sentimentality out of it, would throw their hat in the ring um, and do what they could to get her. I've tried to deliberately not answer the question properly because I don't really know. Um, we should be going for the best. For Man United, we should be going for the best, of course. Okay. But at the moment... There's, there's not much available and the manager that we've got has got us into an incredibly strong position at this point in the season well I mean we might both be wrong I'm going to hand out some gold stars here a couple of gold stars uh, because I'm a big fan of this so first of all starter TJ Trex there because he put Pierre Sundage is a big name I'm about to go what doing well coaching Brazil's national team that's it you've got a pre you're talking to an idiot here I need to know what you're talking about just mentioning names doesn't help we worked it out now. Very good. And also a gold star to John Fry, who has managed to work out the person I was trying to think of who played Shelley in that TV programme, which was Hugh Bennett. And I couldn't remember his name, so the joke did go down as well as I wanted it to. Good job, John Fry. Um, Helen, what's your thoughts? Who would you pick? Or is there nobody? I think you're more likely to attract a manager who's maybe at the current national team who wants to do club management to further their own coaching experience and career, perhaps, um, rather than someone from an already established club, unless it's from over abroad. Um, over abroad. Um, um, I wouldn't mind Bev Priestman. I know she's somewhat cutting her teeth in management, but her success with Canada really showed what she could do with a, a sort of an underdog team of sorts. So that's a country with, that's a country with no women's football league either. So it's not like there's readily available talent in one place is that like there is for lots of national coaches. That's a good shout, Bev Priestman. Very good shout. And also again well done for adding the people the country they're from <laughs> you can keep saying Bev Priestman to me and I'm like, yeah, great. Robert Genericus, who is it? Nobody knows. <laughs> Could be anybody. I've just made that up. I think he might be in Ghostbusters, or is that Zemeckis? I don't know. Gareth, save me. What are you saying? Um, I, I don't, I don't know. I think it's a, a really difficult thing to to talk about when you literally couldn't be in a better position in the league. You know, lost one game. It's against Chelsea. Um, yeah, I guess it depends. People say, oh, you know, who who would you want? Well. I guess it depends who's available. And if they're really, really good, are they going to be available? Probably not. Um, I would say, I mean, probably not going to be a popular decision. Um, if we're kind of just kind of doing fantasy selection of who would be in charge, um, Emma Hayes, because I think she's quality. I, I think I completely agree. We had with, uh, Jennifer. <clears throat> I, I don't know what's going on here. What? What? That one was an interesting enough one. You then went into this one, which caused actual meltdown among some people. It's like, no, <laughs> not Phil Neville. But this one, Mickey Dunn. 
I just wow. Could you imagine? Get a character. Give it a character at the end of the season. <laughs> I love that. Carrick for United Women. Eddie, who are you going with? Well, right now it's gotta be Mark Skinner because we're at the top of the league, but if 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 Serena came calling, Serena in the day. Get Serena in. I like that. And I also like this comment, which is Connor, by the way. It's not me. I'd get that Mark Skinner fella. He's top of the WSL right now. <laughs> Sounds good to me. One word answer. The question, in case you've all forgotten, was in or out? In. Answer, in or out? Charlie Coxon, go. In. In. Helen. In. Gareth. In. Ellie. In. I mean, of course it's in. Was there really any other conversation? I, I mean, mean, what I would potentially say is not to trigger the the one year extension and yeah. potentially offer something a bit longer. Interesting. And that that's that's a good question, actually, Gareth. I was planning on leaving it there, but I think that I, I like that so much. I'm gonna put us back to full screen and ask that. You're saying in or out. Is it trigger or extend? So we'll give you a new word now, trigger or extend. So are we just giving him a year or would you extend the contract based on what you've seen? Charlie. What if immediately now, if it was immediately, immediately now, if you had to give a new con, if it was either, you know, you, you played snog, marry, avoid, I'm sure that sort of stuff. If it was sack, extend, <laughs> trigger. Which I, one use, I can't even articulate why I can only use one word. Yes. Uh, um, extend. Okay. Helen. Trigger. Ooh, oh, Gaza. There's good rationale there. Good rationale. Gareth? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Gareth, um, sorry, Gareth. Yeah, um, yeah uh, extend, but I wouldn't do it right now. I'd wait till the end of the season, but that's not what you asked, but I'm saying it anyway. That's fine. It's not often I put Connor style parameters into my questions, but <laughs> kind of had to. Any? Extend when we win the league this season. <clears throat> yeah, well, I mean, that's just created your own new rule there, hasn't it? But okay, that's fine. Um, I think we're all of the right sort of idea that there's no way at this point in time Mark Skinner should be going anywhere. So good job, everyone. We've answered that question. Skinner in or out, he's in. Unless Michael Carrot becomes free, in which case he gets it to the end of the season by default. That's the comment of the night so far. You've got to work hard to beat that, people. Right. Three players. We're talking a bit about this rotation, keeping a little bit within Mark Skinner. Lisa Olsen, Jay Riviera, both bought, both been told they're not going to be on the pitch until at least March, which is a nice birthday present for Barry. Not so great for the two new signings who have got to sit on the periphery for the moment. So we know that's going to happen. Let's take Estelle Cascarino to begin with. Available Sunday, possibility of playing, therefore, do we see her getting time? Do we think she's just a backup? Or do we think that this is somebody who um, is just going to be sitting on the bench and maybe coming on and, and earning their, uh, their their way back into the team? And we're going to go the other way around because I like to be different. Go on, Ellie. To be honest, what I think, I think people can agree with me on this as well. I think the four outgoings that's coming in the summer, that's what I personally think. What I forgot to add to that is please just move around at the moment because I've got a whole load of comments there I need to catch up on. So I'll go to Gareth, then to Helen, then to Charlie. When Charlie's finished speaking, I'll know that's my cue. Yeah, I, I think for me, I think one thing that's important to kind of notice is when we say um, mid-March, it's looking at it from, you know, the last week of January seems like a long way away, but um, the 12th of February is the... You know, we've got a game this weekend, 5th of Feb, 12th of Feb, then there's a break until the 5th of March. So we're only really looking at three league games that those players are going to be missing for. So um, it, it's not as significant as I think it first sounds. But yeah, I think they're, they'll be brought in, um, particularly those that are permanent signings, um, to kind of be slowly bedded in for this season. I think, you know, part of that is, don't really necessarily want to disrupt the team too much at the moment. Um, and I think for um, for Cascarino, it, 
it's an initial loan with an option to buy. So I wonder if part of it is wanting to see um, what she's like and what she's like in training and, and get a really good look at her in, in games and so on. So um, I suspect we will see her. Will we see her as um, a massive um, part of the squad? Possibly not. You know, so, um, yeah, I think she'll make substitute appearances and have an impact off the bench and Skinner will want to see kind of what, what she offers to the squad in training, in games, etc. Um, and then make a decision in the summer. Is it me? <laughs> um, I think Cascarino possibly signed so we don't have to play Maria as left back, I'm hoping, <laughs> like ever again. Not that she did terribly, but I just felt she wasn't comfortable there. So, um, And that our fullback options for cover are very limited. So even if it's a short-term fix just for the loan, it would be useful, I think, even to have the option there for her. And she can play midfield as well, I think. Um, I'm hoping she'll get some game time on Sunday. If we're winning comfortably at a half-time, for instance, she can come on. Um, and the other two, I think, I think Jade was injured, wasn't she, quite recently, so she's still recovering from that. And... I think I read today Lisa was just come off an off season, so she hasn't really had match fitness or game time or played much recently. So she'll take time to bed in and, um, well, just get to know the team. And it's a different country. It's a different culture. Not too bad for the Canadian, I don't think. But, yeah, so I'm not surprised they wouldn't be starting straight away and they need to see how they do and form those relationships with all, all the, the squad as it is. Yeah, I think um, Mark's kind of alluded to Cascarino unrelated um, as potentially being available, hasn't he? Um, I think she's quite an interesting interesting signing, obviously not getting the game time that she'd want at, at PSG. Um, and also interesting that they, it, was her, it was just her formal departure. She was never going to be back um, and then retracted that. So I think she's an interesting one. She's one who I imagine what they've probably said is, we want you to come and we want to see what you can do for, for a short period and then and then get her in if she can, if she can add quality, good quality and depth. Because um, she plays a couple of positions that she, she can play in defence and she can play as that kind of holding midfielder role. So again, she might be one get one worth getting a look at if we if we think potentially in the summer there might be a couple of midfielders who go off elsewhere um for whatever reason. I thought she was massive. So when we saw her at Reading, she looked like an absolute unit, but she's only about four centimetres taller than me. So she's almost a dwarf, um, which is interesting. And she's a lot younger than I thought. She's only she's nearly 26, so relatively young as well. Um, so, yeah, he's, get, he's getting younger players in as well, isn't he? Um, whereas I think last January it was it was a bit of a scattergun approach because we were in desperate need of, of signings and we got some some vets in. Um but yeah, she's she's a really interesting one to me. In, interesting one for me. She's the one I'm watching the closest, just because the other two are around for a while, aren't they? In sort of women's football terms, they've got relatively long contracts. Like even two and a half years isn't often heard of. Um, never mind three and a half for, for Lisa. So I'm interested to see um, to see what happens with her. She's the one I'm most interested in seeing, just because that potential option to buy. And they were clearly impressed with her in the. Was it the pre was it the preseason game Skinner said that they were impressed with her? She played against us. Um and that piqued their original interest, I think. Interesting. Norman's coming immediately with it's funny how people see things different because I thought Maria was better at a fullback than central. Uh, and as we said before, it's a game of opinions. Um I, I mean she was certainly better at left back than right back. I'll I'll give you that one. Um uh, and then I'm going to hold my peace, I think, on everything else on that particular one. Lisa Nelson and Jade Riviera. Um, does anyone know, just out of interest, because I haven't seen it properly, I didn't manage to research this bit quite as well, why it is that Lisa's only available in five or six weeks. I saw that it was five or six weeks that she then should be available, which takes us to March. I didn't see why. Does anyone know that on the panel? I thought... One, she yeah. she um, had an off season in her previous club, so their season is different time of the year to the, to others. I, I might be wrong. Was it a Norwegian club she was at? 
I believe it was. But I'm, again, I'm so behind on Twitter these last two days. I've been a very busy boy. Um, and to be honest, this was the third most important topic that I had today, but I've shoved it in the middle because otherwise people would tell. So, <laughs> so, uh, so there it is. So listen, unless we know, if you know in the comments, shout it out there. Um, but either way, neither of them available till March. Bit of a controversial question for you. Does that mean, in your mind, because Skinner's just brought two players that are potentially injured or just back from injury, does that tell you are these two players just in case we need them in the running for the end of the season? Or should we expect maybe to be seeing um, one or two people leave the club, if not this month, then in the summer? Is it more looking to the future rather than right here, right now? Charlie? Um, yeah, I think potentially. Mm. I think this is probably in mind with what's going to happen in the summer. I expect a couple of players to leave Um some based on minutes, some because regardless of what happens, I think there is there is the odd player where even if we won the league and got Champions League and won the FA Cup, they would still be off. And it's not necessarily because they're not happy at Man United or they have an issue with the I think it's because they have an idea of where else they want to be. So we talk about Honor as a potential one of those, don't we? She she's very happy here, but she wants, I think, to be back in Spain is the ideal for her. So to go out and get Jade now as a potential longer term replacement um, to give her the time to recover and get up to the standard of fitness that we would want her to be in anticipation of pre-season starting in sort of September time. It'll be won't it because of the World Cup. If she, she might also go to the World Cup, um, I think is shrewd business. I think it's important, um, particularly with the World Cup. Like some of the like Jade, hopefully will be fit for that. She's she's. I've got a friend. Um, from Canada and she raves about her so she's brilliant and same with Lisa you hear a lot of good things and I think with the World Cup coming up you could hold off and then they put on an, an exceptional performance and you've got extra competition so I think to go out and get players now even if they can't immediately come into the into the lineup in the match day squad is important I think it shows um, that there is a, a bit of a strategy so that that's that's proactive um, rather than being reactive to this player might go in the summer. You don't want to be in a situation where some of your better players go and then you're battling it out for whoever's available off the back of a, a World Cup. Um, I think it's a good it's a good transfer policy, good transfer strategy to get those players in now. Some might say the mark of an elite manager, but some may not. Who knows? Um, Helen. What's your thoughts? We know that one of the players, I can't remember which one of the three, is signed till 2026. Uh, obviously, it's not the one who's on loan. Um, Luke, you know, okay. On this one, I really haven't followed this because, like, I don't care. They're here, brilliant. I love it. I can't wait to see them. <laughs> and they'll go when they go, and they'll stay when they stay. It's, I'm not bothered. Mark Skinner, I have complete trust in you. You pick the players, you put them on the pitch, and I'll go, yay, score a goal. Lovely, that's my job. Um, Helen, what do you think? More for the future, more for now. Definitely the future, I think. Um, as Charlie said before, the length of contract shows that, um, assuming they fulfil the, the contract length, barring any horrible disasters or unsettling, you know, if they don't settle in properly. But, yeah, I think tying them down for the future is is, is long-term planning and because so many of the current squad, they've got uncertain futures, you could say. They're not signed up for ages. It's only Toon, isn't it, I think, that's committed for what you'd call long-term in the, in the at the club. So, yeah, I think, yeah, I just agree with everything Charlie said about the shrewd business being done and definitely planning for the future. And, and of course, post-World Cup, when the next window is, you're going to be fighting with a lot more clubs who could offer more depending how the season panned out. Um, so to get them get them in and signed up and committed now is, is great business. Sounds good to me. Um, Gareth and Ellie, I'm simply going to ask, is there anything you want to add on the transfers, the last three that we've made? Uh, if there is, brilliant. If there isn't, we'll scooch on quickly to yeah, just, our final one. 
Uh, just a super, super quick one. I think there's a lot, um, not, necessarily, not necessarily on the transfers. I agree that I think it's long term, but um, I think kind of there's there's always going to be this talk of um, those players that are out of contract. Um, and all I'll, all I'll say is that if I was a player and my contract was expiring this summer, I would be waiting as late as possible because if we are in the Champions League or we're the champions, then instantly you become more valuable and it means that you can delay as long as possible and sign the highest value contract. I think that's what Leslie's doing. I think Ona will go back um, to Spain. I think Mary is probably going to try and milk as much as she can as well, um, seeing as that she's probably the best goalkeeper in the league this season. So, um, yeah, I think I'm more optimistic than a lot of people in terms of contracts um, because I think people are just trying to get as much as they can based on where we finish this season. Seems fair. Ellie, anything you want to add or not? I, f- I fully agree with Gareth. It's like Mary says she wants Champions League, so it all depends on if we get it. And I think right now we're in the best position ever. So, yeah. I yeah. fully agree on it. And yeah, I do think Honor will leave. That's the only one. I think Leicester will stay if we meet the Champions League or we even win the, win the league. Which is sad. Now, I've got to say, this sentence that I'm about to put up on the screen, actually, it scares me because the person that we're about to put up on the screen here has got such a laser focus that if this ever actually happened, I would, I would hide. I, I would hide. Would you not? Mary's just going to get triggered. If she got triggered, I'd be right. I'd be on the floor. Just like, no, because that, that could you imagine? She's got really good throwing kick, like straight on your head. I mean, who would do that, huh? Throwing balls and kicking balls at people's head wouldn't be fair. Right, I want to move on very quickly to my final point for the evening. We've got just under well, about 15 minutes until kickoff in the men's uh, Carabao Cup semi-final against London Forest. It's only leg one, so it's not that important for the first few minutes, but I'd much rather be finished by eight because strong side, and let's be honest, it's nice to have the team on. But... I wanted to talk about well, it is, isn't it, Charlie? Well, to be honest, it's lovely. It's pleasant to watch the men, you know. We want to watch proper football. We'll have to wait till Sunday to watch the girls. But until then, these <laughs> guys. Um, so I want to talk about because they're an elite league. The WSL is an elite league, and it didn't look like one this weekend, but like a Mickey Mouse league. Because the top I can't lose control of what you're saying at you all. Lose control of what I'm saying. Where are you? Just bonkers. I love it. Carry on. Sorry. I am bonkers. You're talking about the men. Yes, I've I've finished the men now. The WSL, Charlie, is an elite league, but it didn't look like an elite league this weekend. It looked like a Mickey Mouse league because only half of them played. Now, the problem with that is simple. The women's teams are not playing generally in the main stadium for the club. So, therefore, because they're not filling it out, they're not doing that, that's fine. But... As a result, that means they're playing elite-level football on grassroots grounds. Therein lies the problem. I did do research for this. Arsenal currently playing at the home of um, Boreham Wood. We're a National League side. You've got Chelsea at Kings Meadow, which, although it is their ground, was of the team of AFC Wimbledon, I think, at one point. So, you know, you're, you're well down on that one because <clears throat> they've not been anywhere since Vinnie Jones, have they? Um Manchester City, yes, they've got their own academy ground. I'll give them that. Um, and I don't know if it's got underfloor heating. We, LSV, I believe, has. Um, but again, we're sort of renting that. You've then got West Ham. We were playing at Dagenham and Redbridge. I can remember playing them for Stevenage. Uh, Everton are at Walton Hall Park. And the less said about that place, the better. Um, Leicester are at the King Power Stadium. So, all right, most times we'll see them there. Uh, Reading, I'm not going to advertise that. But... Yes, they're at that ground and that might have it. Aston Villa at the best Scott. That's Walsall, which I'm not sure what level that is. League one, league two. They fluctuate league between the two. I can't bother to look. But yeah, league one and two. Good. Liverpool, Prenton Park, Tranmere. I mean... League two. Uh, Brighton, Crawley, Broadfield Stadium. So they're right league down there one. as well. League one, league two. And Spurs are at Brisbane Road, which I can confirm is League Two because they're two points ahead of Stevenage in League Two right now. So this is what we're talking about. We're talking about elite level when they're there. So my question that I threw out, I threw it out on Twitter and somebody responded to me positively. And I thought, oh, well, maybe that's actually a thing. So I want to throw it out there. Is there a case that these clubs, such as ours in the WSL, would be able 
to invest in these clubs lower down that they're using the ground for. So let's say, for example, uh, let's take Spurs. Let's say Spurs said, right, Leighton Orient, Brisbane Road. What we're going to do is we're going to give you however much money it is. I don't know how much it costs for underfloor heating. 500 grand, a million, something like that, maybe. But it's, a, it's about 500 grand, I think. Right. So it's going to cost 500 grand. We're going to give you 500,000 pounds to put underfloor heating into Brisbane Road so that when we get round to the winter, we don't have this sort of problem. We will help you to improve your stadium. But that means that for the next three years, we get to use your stadium for our women's football matches and we're not going to pay you for it. We might cover the costs of the security and all that sort of stuff, the match day costs, but we're not going to pay you. You know, you're know, you not going to get a fee from us for using your ground. Is this not a route to go down? Because number one, that's really going to help because now when Leighton Orient are playing and they've got a big game coming up in the winter, oh, look, no snow and they can play. So that's going to help with the congestion there and they play a lot more games than the, the top level do uh, in terms of the league. What do we think about that? And also, is there anything else that could be done by these bigger clubs to help improve what's going on? Because that was farcical to play a game for six minutes, purely, I think, Can because you... of the telly. So I'm going to start with Eddie, if that's all right, and then we'll go round to Gareth and then Helen, and then we'll finish with Captain Sensible, uh, Charlie Cox in there at the top. All right, so off you go, Eddie. Well, it's interesting because I actually was watching Sky Sports News before and Jonas, the Arsenal manager, he was going on about academy stadiums, maybe like doing there, and, but with the you know, under heating and everything. But then, then again, he said about um, the women playing in the men's stadiums more, but then that that's what I mean. It's normally sometimes impossible because sometimes like we know United men, Sometimes play when United Women do on the same day, so that won't be possible. Plus, like he was like about Emirates as well, but sometimes I think that actually they was going on about playing there, I think for the game, but then apparently they said there was some sort of maintenance, something going on there. But I don't know. I think I said it'd be lovely to see the more of the women's teams play at the men's stadiums, but that's what triggers it. It's like we'd, we'd have to like sort out when the actual men are playing and then the women, so that would be the most dif- difficult part about it. But I think, what well, I think it, every every, league, every like, stadium should just have under 14 because that was disgraceful this weekend. Two matches played. I just think we need to invest in the money, but then it's like that, that, that's a problem where do we all get the money from in the women's league when we don't get enough money as it is. Absolutely. And this is what I was getting at with what John's put here, the fact that it's mostly lower league grounds. So this is actually going to help. It will help grassroots football because they will have the ability to play their football and not have to stick it all in at the end. Now, for those of you that don't know, uh, young Gareth here is a bit more of a grassrootsy type of guy. Um, so I was that's part of the reason why I really wanted to get you on today, Gareth. So go for it. The soapbox slash floor is yours. Yeah, so... Um... We at FC United this season have had a few games postponed when we would have been away um, because of pitches. Um, if we were trying to play inside this, the stadium, we would have had games postponed, but we've got alternative venues. So we've been able to get games on. So it's not really affected us too much. Um, I think the thing with under, under floor heating is, under soil heating, is that once you make that initial outlay of... Um, of a half, 500k half million there's then a cost of the fuel to heat it which costs i read between two and three thousand pounds per day it's on so if you've got it on for a week in the run-up to a game you're looking at paying you know sort of fifteen thousand pounds just just to get that game on which then means you're definitely going to run at a loss for, for that game so for some clubs that's really expensive i imagine you look at um especially if you look at the top of the championship at the moment, um, London City Lionesses are at the top there. They are their own in, independent team. Um, for them to have them not viable. Bristol City, you know, they probably have got um, on the sort of heating Ashton Gate, but um, are they going to then be able to make that expense? That's the, that's the tricky thing for me is, you know, there are probably are clubs in the WSL that, that can afford to make this outlay. Um but but not everybody. Um, 
for me, the biggest issue at the weekend wasn't games being postponed because games being postponed is is part of football. And yes, the WSL is an elite league. It is a top flight league. Um, Sorry, Gav, but... can I get you to answer this then, what Connor's put here? Because he says that if it's the Premier League, there'd be outrage and uproar that half of it's been called off. Do you agree with that statement or is Connor... Yeah, I, I think Connor's right. Um, but also... It, it just comes down to the money. Like there, there is, you know, a staggering amount more money being invested into the into the Premier League, um, and into the the men's championship. And I think in terms of of where the money is, the WSL probably is on a par with um, League One, maybe. And you know, I think that's kind of. Where, where the investment is. As more investment comes, then absolutely there's no excuse to not have these heated pitches. But I think the, the question comes in, would you rather have, um, let's take West Ham, for example. Would you rather have West Ham at Dagenham and Redbridge's stadium, which has um, a, a good size um, ground, um, you know, it's got a decent size capacity. It's got decent facilities there in terms of parking and things. Um, or would you rather have them at West Ham's training ground, which may be slightly better in terms of getting games on, but is it going to have the same facilities there for fans? And I think it's it's really tricky at the moment to try and find that balance for a league that is rapidly expanding and is attracting a lot of people, um, but doesn't yet quite have the finance in order to make these massive outlay in, in terms of payments. Um, it's it's tricky. Like I say, the biggest issue for me isn't that games were postponed. It's actually my biggest issue is that the Chelsea game wasn't postponed. And I'm maybe putting a tinfoil hat on here. I think the reason it wasn't called off earlier is because it was a television game. I think if that game wasn't on TV, the referee calls it off. Um and I think that's kind of the issue is why was player safety put at risk for television? So if in that first six minutes there's a tackle that goes in and somebody lands funny and, I don't know, dislocates their knee or, or does another ACL injury and it's because the ground was frozen, then there would definitely be uproar and it would be way more justified. So um, I think it's a really tricky one. Um, and in, in, in an ideal world, Yes, every single one of the 12 grounds would have under undersoil heating. Unfortunately, we don't live in an ideal world. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's a long way. To, that's a lot of um, around the houses to say that I'm on the fence, really, isn't it? It's a fair point. It's a fair point. And, I, I mean, is there not the, I think Connor said it here. You, you made some fantastic points, and I'm just pleased because... This was, again, one of the big reasons why I wanted to get you on because I knew you'd have some great points well on this. And I'm just delighted that that you did so because it makes us think a bit more about it. We can always sit in this pie-in-the-sky idea. Um, but I also agree with this from Jennifer. Membership of the WSL should require undersaw heating and VAR for when it's introduced. And is there not the argument that, yeah, all right, um, you know, Leighton Orient might not be able to afford to put it on, um, but the option is there for the WSL teams to have it turned on the week before and they are paying the costs for that, there is the potential there so that they don't have to miss out their games. And then it's up to Leighton Orient. If they want to budget for it, they can budget for it. And if they don't, then they don't. Helen, where would you go with that? Um, I, the issue, I think, for me wasn't postponement. Again, like Gareth said, it, it was the fact the game started. Um, because the amount of snow and ice we get every year isn't really that much. You might postpone one, take a team, they might get two two games postponed a year, maybe. It's not like we're a really snowy, icy country. I think it's more, more likely that the pitches need to be drained of rain than they do clear of ice and snow. And, and yeah, I mean, where's the money going to come from? That's, the, you know, the big question for a lot of the WSL um, for facilities, for improving the standard. Um, I mean, I know it will never happen, but male footballers could donate two weeks' wages, and it would solve a lot of a lot of the monetary issues. But that's living in cloud cuckoo land, isn't it? 
Mm. I think it is one of those. It's trying to close that gap whilst there is still a gap. And that's the hard bit. You know, this is the problem with money and women's football at the moment. I agree. Charlie, you are down to about three minutes. That gives me about 30. Hello, it's the cat's bottom again. We've got about three minutes and a minute for me to say goodbye to everyone. Uh, and then it will be kickoff. They're in the tunnel as we speak. It's fine. Um, I'll just say really quickly that, I'll, like, just to reiterate that, yes, in an ideal world, people are talking about undersoil heating and VAR and all these other things, which is yes. But I actually think where women's football is at the moment, there are bigger priorities if money is available. There are other things that are more important at the moment than that. So I'm talking about things like um, medical care, so the medical care they get, women's footballers, the access to training facilities, um, their wages, the referees not being full time, the equipment they have, they still wear football boots that are built for men. So I think there are other things that are more important than getting under soil heating. There wouldn't have been as much uproar this weekend if the correct decisions had been made earlier the night before because it was only going to get colder. That was what was ridiculous about it. I, I genuinely believe there are other areas we need to prioritise first with funding that come before under soil heating and VAR, keeping it short and sweet. And I listed them already. But you've listed them brilliantly and, and I love that. And that's why it's so good to have had this panel on. You've come up with some great ideas, some great points. Um, hey, it's something that we could end up talking about in another fans forum. So we will jot that one down and throw that in there. What are the lists of things that are more important? And I do have to say, because I didn't address it well enough, Gareth's point there about the player safety, 100%. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was scandalous that they decided to kick off a game just because it was on the telly. And they can tell us that it wasn't that for as, as long as they want. But clearly, you know, it, it was on because the BBC wanted to give it a go. And it was only because the referee finally realised that he might have a lawsuit on his hands that we'd probably better <laughs> shut this one down because they're sliding around. Oh, well, more than Phil Jones in the back line of a Manchester United defence. Speaking of which, they're on the telly box, so they are. So as good or bad United fans, it's our job now to go and support Eric's Tricky reg Reds, not Regs, tricky reds help them to get through listen i've really loved this chat thank you so much for coming on it's been absolutely brilliant hope everybody else enjoyed it um like and subscribe if you haven't already we're back on i want to say friday friday yes we've got the sunderland preview uh, with a sunderland fan so get yourself over here so that we can laugh at them uh, and then hope that they don't laugh at us again on the monday if it all goes wrong which it won't because mark skinner's great we're keeping him in don't you know Take care, everyone. Goodbye.